Do you think everybody's gullible to some extent that they're going to fall for the appearance at some point? Um, well, for me, for my model of seeing it, it isn't about gullibility. Yes, not a lot of science done on um, gullibility. There's plenty done on how, how people swindle and how people fool us, but not much done on people getting fooled. Somewhat counterintuitively, it's the, it's the more trusting people, the people that score as higher trusters, that actually emerge as less gullible. They obviously get fooled, as we all do, I think, regardless of whether you're, whether you're trusting or not, but what they tend to do is to, high trusting people tend to be very good at learning from those experiences where they have been duped. They tend not to generalise it over everybody and then just start being cynical about everything, which then makes them more effective socially. But as far as gullibility goes, if you go and see a psychic, it doesn't matter how sceptical you are, unless you really know the sorts of tricks that fake psychics at least use, it can be very convincing. It doesn't really matter how much you believe in it or not believe in it. It's about specific knowledge or specific skills. As far as what I do goes, I, I, I see it very much about playing specifically to people's in, intelligence. You create a false logic. Um, you create a what appears to be an ABC. So, you know, in the case of a card trick, A is you pick a card, B is I make some magic thing over it, and C is it's in my pocket, and that seems impossible. But you, you miss, in fact, that between A and B, there was another stage where maybe I, you know, so you picked a card, and I sort of, I took them back and gave them a little shuffle and had them back to you, or uh, there was something in the way that you picked the card that actually was, I was forcing a card on you, I was controlling your decision, but it doesn't seem important, so you don't really remember that. And similarly between me doing the magic pass and ending up in my pocket, maybe I did something else. Maybe I asked you to put the cards in your pocket and I gestured in my pocket as, as I did that and that's when I loaded the card in. But it doesn't seem important to the story and you remember an A, B, C that's impossible. But if you see it in terms of, that's actually A, C, E and the real B, it actually goes A, then B, then C, then D, then E, then it becomes quite possible. So to me that's, that's not about gullibility, that's about a certain grammar that people will follow. But you've managed to persuade thousands of people, millions of people, that you're going from A to C when, in fact, they haven't realised how complex the route was. So can yeah. we ever be sure of anything then? We can't function unless we form those patterns, you know, this, and this presumably goes back to if you see half a, half a saber-toothed tiger coming around the corner at you, you don't wait for the other half, you run. And it's better to have a, you know, that, that false positive than a, than a false negative. In the same way the magician creates that false pattern knowing we are hardwired probably to, to fall for that and fall for the easier pattern that's presented to us. Um, you know, in the same way, I think that's something that's it's pretty much inescapable and ultimately probably positive. Mm -hmm.